Okay, so we've got our second guitar recorded, and now we've got double track guitar. Okay, now let's just zoom in at the very beginning. Like that, there we go. This is the second guitar. Look at the strums. Uh, I'm playing the second guitar the same as the first, but the strums are never going to be exactly the same. Some, if you zoom in even a little bit more, you'll see like some of the strums in the second guitar track will be behind the first track. You know, it's subtle, like that little strum there, look, is behind the, the same strum on the first track. This little strum here is be a little bit behind the strum on the first track. Okay, that strum there, that bigger strum there, it's a little bit behind the timing of the big strum on the first track. So you will tend to get this thing where your second guitar track might lag a little bit, the timing will be slightly behind the first track because you're kind of playing along to another track. Okay, the timing of the two anyway will never be exactly perfect. Now, depending on how tightly you've played the timing of the two, the second guitar to the first one. You know, it's this subtle we're talking about, but have a listen. You know, they don't sound out of time, okay, but there is a way to tighten these two guitars so that their strums are tighter together, exactly on the money together. Now, we can either tighten the second guitar track to follow the strumming of the first guitar track and that will simply tighten the second guitar track strumming to match the first guitar track strumming. So the two guitars doing the double tracking have got the same strum timing tightened up together really tight. Or we can tighten both the guitar tracks and this is double tracked guitar with the same strumming remember we can we can tighten both the guitar tracks to follow the drum timing that will have the effect of tightening both guitars to the drum hits which has the same effect of making both guitars strumming tighten up together but they're both tightened to the timing of the drums okay right so look we go track track header show groove track and when you click this you don't actually see anything. You think, well, what's going on? Nothing's appeared. But when you mouse over the middle edge of any track, here, look, a star appears, and any track can be made the groove track. So I mouse over the middle edge of the drum track, click that star, boom, this is now the groove track, and every other track has a tick box, which I can tick to make that track's timing follow the drums. Let's zoom in and look at the two guitar tracks there, look. Okay. Guitar track number one, the original, and the double tracked one. Now, let's look at this second double track guitar. If I tick its tick box, its strums will be fractionally moved to meet the timing of the kicks and snares. Watch. On, off. See how the strums are moving a little bit? Some, most of them are moving forward in time. Some of them are being left alone, the ones that are really close on the beat anyway. And actually even one or two of them have been moved slightly back in time. But you see that? On, they move off, on, off. And those strums are being moved hook to match the timing of the kicks and snares down here. If I do the same to the first track, look, hook, see? Little subtle timing movements. Let me let me zoom out a little bit so you can see more of the guitar. Here's the second of the original track, look, off. On. See how there's a little subtle timing movements happening with those? You can see them just fractionally moving. Each of the little strums, some of them aren't moving at all, but a lot of them are being moved fractionally. Let's zoom in. Look at the second bit. Whoop, too much. Right, look at this a bit further down the plane. Have a look. Look. Timing off. See how some they're subtly moving, some of them? Yeah, so our groove matched. Boom. Off. On. Now that strum there, look, is actually being moved back in time when I groove match it. It's being pushed a little, a little bit back to match the kick of the of the drum kit under there, look. Okay, so we've groove matched both guitars now to the timing of the drums. That has the effect of tightening the strums of both guitars to the exact same timing of the kicks and snares. So the strums on the guitars are brought closer together to be more tight. 
but they're tightening both guitars are tightening to the drum hits but it does make both guitar strums now line up really tight but they're both being matched to the kicks and snares on the on the drum track which is the groove track and have a listen now Now it's incredibly subtle. If I take both guitars off so they're no longer following the drums, it's almost hard to tell the difference. Put them both on. Now they're following the drums. Okay, so that's how you make your two guitar tracks, but in this case, the, these are double, you know, a double tracked, an original and a double tracked guitar, tighten up to follow the drums. It tightens both guitars to the timing of the drums, and it has a consequence of tightening the timing of both strum guitars together tighter, but they're both matched to the drums. Or the other way of doing it is D tick, so you're not tightening either guitar track to the drums. Click on the start to turn the groove off for the drum track. Okay. I then make the original guitar the groove track and match the timing of the second guitar to the original guitar. Now I'll zoom in again and look. As I bring, this is the groove master now, the original guitar. And then when I tick the second double track guitar, it tightens, look, tighten, off, tighten, off. It tightens the second guitar to match the original guitar. So now that tightens the, the second double track guitar to the first guitar, but neither of them are tightened to the drum track. That's the other way of doing it. You can tighten the two, gu two guitars together so they're groove matched, but they're not groove matched to the drums. So that so they're any looseness in the playing uh, that isn't absolutely on the money with the drums is retained, but the two guitars are locked together. So you go for that technique. If you want there to be a little bit more looseness to the guitars, not super tight with the drums, and they're now locked together in groove timing, which makes their strums tight together, but they're not groove matched to the drums. Okay? But I'm going to actually groove match them to the drums, so take that off. I'm going to make, come on, off. Off, thank you. I'll make the drums the groove track and tighten both guitars to the groove of the drum. That tightens the two guitar strums together, matched to the timing of the drum track. Now, let's zoom in and have a look. Sometimes when you do this, okay, let's choose the first guitar, the second guitar track. Bring in the editor down below. Now when you tighten, yeah, one of, when you put a groove, when you make one of the tracks a groove track like the drums and then you go to one of the audio tracks like say this second guitar here and you look at it in the editor, all these lines have been put in across the strumming and that's how Garage band tightens the guitar strums to the drums. Okay, when you assign a groove track, it analyzes all the audio tracks and it gives them these lines right on the major strum hits, the loud bits of energy where you're going strum, 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 and it gives lines also to minor guitar strums, like that little secondary strum there and that little secondary strum there. Now the secondary strums that aren't on the beats, right, they don't get a solid line. If I mouse over any of the bigger beats, big beat, yeah, this handle appears up at the top there with a little X. Same with that big beat, same with that big beat, same with that big strum, rather, strum, strum. Every major strum that's a louder strum that's on an actual beat or sub-beat is given one of these handles and when you tighten the track by ticking it to the drums what 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 garage band does is it gets that strum and it if needs be it moves it forward to match the timing of the drums or if it's too far forward it moves it back to to match the the timing of the drums right but the little sub strums in between don't get those they don't get moved they're left alone all right now sometimes when you do this tightening of of guitar tracks to the drums or to each other if there's a strum at the very beginning that is out of time, look at this track here. The very first strum is off the beat, it's behind the beat. 
and here it is in the editor. Let's zoom in, look at it. See that first strum? It's off the beat. But sometimes, when GarageBand tightens these major strums, like that one, you know, for example, if it was behind the beat, it gets moved forward to match the drum hits. Or if it's too far forward, it gets moved back a little bit to match the drum hits. Sometimes when GarageBand does that to these major strumming bits of a guitar, it misses the very, very first one out at the very, very beginning. It doesn't give it a solid thing and it doesn't move its timing. So that's what we've got here. This very first strum on the second track is slightly behind the beat. Hear it? Boom, like that. So I'm going to manually move this forward. I zoom in on it on the editor here. I select, what I do is, what I do is this. I select the track that's got this very first strum behind the beat, which hasn't been moved forward automatically. Right. I open the scissors editor down here. Zoom, zoom in on the, oh, the track area so we see the strum on the track area there. There it is behind the beat, look. look there it is. Look, that first drum is behind the beat. It hasn't been automatically moved forward to match the drum kick. I highlight the track, I go to the editor down here, and I zoom in at that, to that very first hit at the, of the guitar at the very, very beginning of the song. Now, it's got a trans semi-transparent line on, not a solid line like this with a handle at the top, like the strum, the major strums that have been moved. This one was missed out, and that often happens. If there's a strum at the very beginning that or a guitar hit at the beginning that's late the, and it's right on the very first beat of the bar of the song the very first opening of the song it won't get a handle and get moved forward and i'm going to manually correct this what i do is i mouse over this semi-transparent line and these golf tees appear click on it and it puts in a solid line now now it's got a solid handle which when i mouse over it's got the little handle and the x at the top the same as the other big strums Right, the same as these other big strums. They've all got that solid handle. Now I've manually put a solid handle on that first strum. Okay. So now I'm going to move this big strum at the very beginning forward in time because it's late. And I just grab this line and move it forward. Now as I move it forward, the little tiny bit of audio here before the strum is being made shorter and shorter and shorter. Whoops. It's being made shorter and shorter and shorter. Watch. Shorter and shorter. And as I bring this first hit on the guitar forward and forward and forward the little bit of audio in front that's being crushed shorter and shorter in time eventually goes red because I'm squishing it so much it goes red look like that now if I let go when that's red GarageBand warns me that I've crushed this little tiny bit of audio before the first strum so much that I'm time compressing it by a factor which may cause overloads. Well, this is a tiny little bit of audio of no more than a few thousandths of a second. It doesn't really matter. I could, I'll just cancel that. I could bring this forward, right forward until it goes red, as far as I can push this forward, let go, and GarageBand warns me, well, that tiny bit of audio has been crushed to be really short. You you know, you've time compressed it so much, it could cause a problem. But it's such a tiny short bit of audio, you won't hear it, it won't make an audible problem. OK. Right, now have a listen. There's no audio artefact has been created by crushing that. But the timing of this hit is right on the money at the beginning of the song now. Yeah, let's zoom in. Let's take the editor off so that the tracks are now deeper. We can see them. Zoom right in at the beginning. Right. And you see that hit now has been brought nicely forward right at the beginning of the song. Yeah, and the timing sounds good for that opening hit. OK, there you go. That's tightening the guitars. Either you tighten the second double track guitar to the first one by making this first track the groove master and then making your double track second guitar groove timed to the original one. That tightens both guitars but not the drums. Or you make the drums the groove master and tighten both guitars and any other instruments to the drums, which has the effect of tightening both guitars to the drums, which also tightens the strums of both the double track guitars together. And that's what we've done. Okay, That just tightens everything up.
and it's done it across all the guitar playing for both tracks both have been tightened to the drums okay so there you go that's another thing you can do once you've got either a single or a double track guitar in there you can tighten your guitars to the drum track okay